Hey guys and welcome! Today we're going to have a look at the basic of corn snakes. Corn snakes are a very, very popular type of snake to have in your household and for a very good reason. These guys are incredible easy to care for, they're beautiful to look at, they're easy feeders, they don't require much from a setup, so you can't really go wrong with a corn snake. Corn snakes are native to the southeastern part of the United States. They mainly live on land and you will usually see them either at night or at dawn or dusk. They do live to be between 15 and 20 years in captivity, but in the wild I've heard that they usually only live up until they are around 8 years old. The size of the corn snake is usually between 1 meter and 1 and a half meters, and that is a pretty pretty good size for a snake to have, especially if you are a first time snake owner and you want a snake to have some size but you don't want one of those big boas to grow 3 meters. Of course, larger specimens have been found, but the usual snake won't grow beyond the 1.5 meters. The corn snake, of course, comes in a variety of colors, especially because now we've introduced the morphs onto the corn snake as well, which makes uh, over 700 different types of morph or different types of colors and patterns available in the corn snake. But the normal corn snake, the wild type corn snake, you will usually find having this orange, deep yellow, reddish kind of color. Like, for example, my beautiful corn snake queenie here. Some of you guys may know her already. She is a wild type, although she does have some head genes, which means that she has some genes hidden in her, but none visible. So she's only a normal uh, visible. So this is what a corn snake might look like should you ever see one in the wild. Corn snakes are not venomous, which means that should you ever get a bite from them, it won't do any lasting damage. Of course, it might hurt a little bit, but it won't do any serious damage to you like a venomous snake might do. But corn snakes are actually often killed in the wild because they do kind of resemble the copperhead snake, which is very venomous. You might see some resembles in the two and you might look at it and say, how can anyone ever look at a corn snake and think it's a copperhead? But I think that if you are in the wild and you're not that used to snake and you know there is a venomous copperhead snake out there and you look at a corn snake very quickly, of course you can mistake it for a copperhead snake. I've heard that the name of the corn snake actually stems from it usually being found around corn fields where it's uh, hunting for its preferred prey. So that's where the name comes from and I think that's kind of cute. Speaking of prey, the corn snake is a carnivore, which of course means that it eats meat. It is an opportunistic feeder, so it will pretty much eat anything that crosses its path. Usually it will be mice, rats, all kinds of rodent and so on. In captivity, of course, the snake will do perfectly fine by eating mice. Corn snakes, like for example the boa constrictor, is a constrictor as well, which means that when it uh, grabs the prey, it squeezes it until it dies and then it swallows it whole. You will also see this behavior in captivity if you are feeding frozen, for example. Some snakes, however, not only the corn snake, can be what I like to call shy eaters, which means that they won't strike immediately, they might not even strike at all, but if you leave uh, the mouse inside the terrarium, walk away and then come back an hour later, the snake will have eaten it. But that's just how some of the snake in captivity are. In the wild corn snakes, they actually hibernate during these cold months. And I know that in some countries, I can't remember which ones, but I remember someone telling me, you are actually required to let your corn snake hibernate. In my country, for example, you are not required to allow them to hibernate, which means that you can pretty much just have them active like your boa or your ball python all year around. In the wild corn snake, they usually mate between March and May. I'm not sure how it is in captivity. I forgot to ask that corn snake breeder I was visiting about uh, exactly that. When the female has laid her eggs, it takes up until 60 to 65 days for the little snakes to hatch. When the little snakes they hatch from their eggs, they are fully capable of taking care of themselves, which means they don't need a parent. They are just ready to go out into the world, eat some mice and do all the things that a snake should do. And that's pretty impressive, I think. When it comes to keeping corn snakes in captivity, my number one advice for you is to make absolutely sure that there's no way out of the terrarium because this snake is an escape artist and if there is a hole, if there is an opening, if there's anything he can, he or she can squeeze his little head through, they will find it, trust me on that. So you have to be absolutely sure that there's no way that your snake can get out of your terrarium. When it comes to the size of the terrarium, corn snakes are actually fully capable of going into a big terrarium. So you can get a, a big terrarium, just put it in there. Uh, the thing about them is if you get a hatchling, it might be better to just start off in a small terrarium, making sure that their feeding habit is okay and all that 
kind of stuff and then you can put them into a big terrarium. But if you're going out and you're buying an adult corn snake, you can just put them in whatever size of terrarium you like. Although the minimum requirements I think is 75 liters. It's always a good idea to provide your snake with several hides. I would say to at least one in the warm side, one in the cold side. If you want to be really good to your corn snake, I would say that a lot of branches is definitely something you should do. Also just add in all sorts of clutter. The more you put in, the more these guys will use it because they are actually snakes. So if you put a lot of branches in, you will see them climbing on it. The corn snake is a very forgiving snake when you're housing, which means that if you're making a few mistakes, the snake won't mind that much as long as of course you fix them uh, down the road. The temperature should be around 21 to 29 degrees Celsius. For my corn snake I use a heat pad, but you can also go something like a heat lamp instead if that's what you feel like. Of course there should always be access to water and all that kind of stuff. I have done a video about setting up a terrarium for a corn snake, I've linked to it right down here. I don't want to go into any more details about this uh, in this video. So all in all the corn snake is a very beloved snake by everyone, by the expert and by the newly beginner snake keeper. They are one of my absolute favorite types of snakes and they should be one of yours as well. Thank you so much guys for now, I really do hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please leave a like if you want to see more remember to subscribe to the channel thank you so much for now and bye bye